What makes the Toyota Supra so iconic? After all, sales of the car were so low that the model was discontinued in America in 1998. So now you owe me a 10 second car. These were the famous words that catapulted the Supra Mark IV to fame in the first Fast and Furious movie. The Supra became that 10 second car, a road legal car that can do a quarter mile in 10.9 seconds or less. Before the movie, the Supra Mark IV had become synonymous with tuning culture. There was a good reason for this. Just like all Toyota engines, the Supra was a reliable car. More than that, it was a reliable sports car, at a time when not all sports cars were all that reliable. But most importantly for the tuning community, the engine was seriously overbuilt. This engine was released at a time when there was an unspoken gentleman's agreement in Japan. Car makers were limiting horsepower to around 280 horsepower to keep the road safer. So, Toyota built this incredible engine that was capable of so much more power. You could customize it like you wanted, and a few relatively easy adjustments unlocked a lot more power. The engine block was the key. It was cast from a single block of heavy-duty cast iron. This made it heavier, but also stronger. So it could handle much higher horsepower without cracking. The car was also smoother thanks to the inline six design, which reduced vibrations. The Formula One inspired braking system put it at the top of a 1997 test by Car and Driver magazine. Heavily modified units of the 2JZ engine by an enthusiastic aftermarket have been able to reach 2,000 horsepower. Yes, 2,000. It was this tunability that got it noticed by the products of Fast and Furious. It was clearly not a 10 second car in its stock form, but that was the point for a movie about tuning fast cars. It had the potential to go at speeds that were insane. But talking about history, the Supra didn't start out that great. In fact, it started out pretty average. It didn't even start out as a sports car. Originally, it was designed as a pony car. In 1964, when Ford launched the Mustang, it also launched an entire new breed of cars. The pony class were affordable, stylish cars with a sporty or performance image, but they weren't sports cars. Toyota launched their pony class model, the Celica, in 1970. Celica's name is derived from the Spanish word for heavenly or celestial. Its symbol was a stylized dragon. Apparently, Kichiro Toyota, the founder of Toyota, was a fan of dragon boat racing. The second generation was named A40 Celica XX, but Toyota America didn't like the name, so they renamed it Celica Supra, meaning above or better. Toyota engaged Lotus, a British car manufacturer, to help design the engine. They had expertise in building high-speed cars. The addition of two cylinders made it a much smoother ride, but it was still pretty much average. The 1980s model was named the A50 Celica Supra, but it became known as the Mark II in America also average performance. Then, by the end of the decade, Supra came into its own. It dropped the Celica and the XX and was simply the Toyota Supra. The 1987 Supra Turbo, or Mark III, was released with a turbocharged engine made for the US with 230 horsepower. So it started to live up to its name. Then came the Supra Mark IV in 1993 with a brand new inline 6JZ series engine. This is the model that most people associate with the Supra brand and the car that starred in Fast and Furious. The first three generations had engines based on the Toyota Crown and the 2000 GT engines. The engine was new, but the design of the car resembled 1960s Toyota's 2000 GT. The 2000 GT had been built to rival sports cars in Europe. The new Supra was no longer a sporty Grand Tour, but now a pure sports car. Its low bonnet line and high-rise optional rear spoiler were more aerodynamic and built for speed. Cockpit featured a dashboard inspired by fighter jets. It could give a 3.6 liter Porsche and Aston Martin DB7 a run for their money, but only cost half as much as these European models did. By the time it became famous in Fast and Furious, production of the Supra had stopped. Sales had declined, despite its excellent performance but it was still living its best life on the streets. 
After the movie, its popularity soared so that secondhand Supras became expensive to buy. Toyota had no plans to continue with the Supra, but there were a lot of diehard fans who disagreed with this decision. In 2012, Toyota designers in Newport Beach, California, developed a concept car called the FT1 that looked like it could be the new Supra. It didn't take much for Akio Toyota, president of Toyota, to approach the project and announce the return of the Supra. He himself is the ultimate Supra fan. With the Supra, I couldn't be a master driver. I trained my master driver ability by driving Supra a long time ago. I went to New Brooklyn uh, together with Mr. Narse, who taught me how to drive the car. Many car is driving more than 200 kilometers, so I'm so scared. One lap is about 10 minutes. I felt like 10 minutes from now, am I still alive? He became a master driver behind the wheel of his third generation Supra. In his words, it's been 17 years since the last Supra rolled off the line, and it famously beat that Ferrari in the Fast and the Furious. But affection for the Supra is as strong as ever. Development of the fifth generation began. It had a lot to live up to. Toyota had a big challenge when it came to building it. Since it was a Supra, tradition demanded it hit a straight six engine. But Toyota didn't build engines like that anymore. They would have needed a whole new engine design, a whole new engine plant. This wasn't financially possible, so Toyota partnered with BMW. The result is the 2020 GR Supra race car. The three liter turbocharged i6 makes 335 horsepower. What's pretty amazing is that, adjusted for inflation, this model costs less than it did back in the 1990s. Of course, the old models are even more expensive now. The 94 is so popular that sales prices have reached over $100,000. That's double what a new 2020 Supra costs. So we wonder if the new Supras will ever be as expensive as its 30 year old predecessor or whether it will be tuned to be as powerful. Of course, given the Supra's history, it didn't take long before the aftermarket responded. What's unusual is that the German performance cartooner A.C. Schnitzer officially released an engine tune for the 2020 Toyota Supra. It's the first time this company had worked on a Toyota. But since the Supra is built on BMW technology, it makes sense. The engine tune increases the horsepower to 400, which is 65 horsepower higher than the factory model. They say that this isn't close to what the engine is capable of. Other tuners agree. Toyota themselves even fueled the challenge. They displayed a special 1,000 horsepower B58 Supra engine at SEMA. Award-winning engine builder Stefan Papadakis of Papadakis Racing got 1,000 horsepower. Took a lot of work and three days on the dyno. What was so amazing is that he even was able to use original parts like the piston rings and head gaskets even though the pressure was hugely increased. He still thinks there is even more potential. So this should keep tuners at ease. Like the original highly tunable 2JZ engine, the new B58 has got lots of spare power. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. We have much more exciting car content coming very soon. So subscribe below and ring that bell to get notified of our next video. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.